First of all, good morning to everyone, and uh, thank you for the organizer giving me the opportunity uh, to discuss about um, uh, some of the, uh, the enhancement in the in the new, uh, in the technology for the AMI or smart metering. Uh, and I am uh, Kaver Azuzian, uh, CTO of the uh, Energy and Telecom Sejamcom, and I'm board member of the G3 Alliance. I'm just going to make a short introduction. A short introduction on the G3 Alliance. Uh, G3 Alliance, uh, uh, it is uh, established in, in France uh, uh, with uh, uh, the leadership of the EDF and NEDES. Uh, the, uh, NEDES is the distributor of the 33 million uh, household in, in France. They, they were looking for uh, establishing a better technology, PLC technology. Uh, for their AMI in 2005-2006, and they invested uh, um, uh, with uh, some uh, semiconductor company and system integrity to develop a new technology. And the technology, as we know, is a G3 PLC, is a power line communication. Uh, and and the and the solution uh, and the solution that they were looking for, it wanted to have higher data rate, longer distance. Um, uh, reaching to the longer distance as well as robust communication, IPv6 capabilities, uh, and and uh, the most important a standard base. Uh, and a standard base means that everyone can have uh, access to the solution, and uh, they 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 enjoy having multi multi vendors and multi uh, 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 integrator participate in their AMI uh, deployment. And, uh, and one of the other uh, point that they were looking for for the self uh, self healing network, the network can uh, can adopt itself based on the condition. And as a result of that, they come up with the G3 PLC, and then they establish the G3 PLC alliance. And and there are uh, about 100 uh, uh, the system integrator DSOs. Uh, uh, semiconductor companies are are participating in this uh, alliance, uh, and and they are very active to to review the specification and be able to understand and then to, to make a necessary modification to adopt the, the the various needs of the market and and various issue that the market is is facing as uh, as a result of that uh, there is about 80 million of the Nodes are being managed for the G3 PLC communication, the PLC as a whole, and 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 in addition to that, there are almost uh, about 500 uh, uh, manufacturer certify uh, the solution. And G3 Alliance, uh, the main responsibility is the guardian of the solution. Uh, guardian means that it creates an environment that all these uh, system integrators, semiconductor, they can work together to define the, the solution. They, uh, they make the specification, and then they move the specification to the ITU or, uh, international uh, certification body. And over there, it being become certified uh, for the uh, for uh, global use. And uh, and in addition to that, they are responsible for the certification part of it, making sure that the product uh, the, the the vendors are using is certified and interoperable. Having said that, uh, uh, based on the introduction I made, I I wanted to introduce the latest work uh, that the G3 Alliance has done. And introduced uh, uh, about a year ago is uh, is a hybrid G3 PLC R R RF. Now, why why they got to this uh, road, and why they decided to to add the RF technology to the G3 PLC? That's uh, that's actually the evolution of the smart grid. You know, a smart grid started in 2009 2010. Uh, the needs are being uh, being reevaluated, and what are the needs that we are talking about? Originally, when uh, when they wanted to uh, develop the AMI, mainly was the meter reading and certain tempering detection. 
and uh, demand response, limited demand response. But today, the market is looking at the transition from AMI to a smart grid application. And when we talk about a smart grid, it means that battery power devices. In addition to that, the expectation for the, when they will talk about the KPI and expectation to the KPI, how much, how, what is the performance of the device? Uh, at the beginning, they were, they were expecting a 95% KPI, 96%, 94%, was was the right number for the for the DSO to manage their network. Today uh, they are asking for 98, 99 percent KPI. They wanted to have the better performance on the communication link. As you know that when we are talking about communication link and why we are spending so much time on the communication link, because it's the first build, building block of the entire network. When you wanted to make your AMI network and you put all the software and smart applications on top of it, first you have to have the link and, and reliable link to be able to, to pass the information. As a result of that, uh, the, the, the communication become very important and we realized that, that in order to, to move to the next phase of it, by keeping the RF technology inside the PLC, it create a more flexibility in the solution increase the uh, reachability, a lower cost of the ownership, it means that the infrastructure that you have to build for either technology is reduced, uh, putting the repeater canopy, uh, all those, because the complementary solution uh, automatically be able to, to manage each other means that the device has the intelligence automatically switch to the RF or PLC communication. And when we come to the performance, as I said, that it, it is a bridge to take you from the AMI market or a smart meter into a smart grid application, IoT application, as well as the gas meter, water meter, you can include it to your network. And that was the merit of uh, spin, uh, introducing this new new technology, which is the PLC hybrid. Just to emphasize the point of the hybrid, because there were some mis miscommunication in the market of the hybrid, they think that it is a module-based solution where the meter, you can change the module, you can take the RF module, you put the PLC module. It is not the case. It is a single solution and a single microprocessor has the intelligence to make the determination that whether it used the RF or whether you use the PLC based on the channel condition. Just wanted to emphasize on this uh, topic because uh, there was certain uh, certain uh, misunderstanding on the how the hybrid technology is operating. The next point, as I said that the, the use case about the transition to a smart grid, that was uh, uh, one of the point. The other point was about reachability. I said flexibility and reachability. Why we we concerned about reachability? Because it, it, this new solution, it, it does some use cases that before we have to build the infrastructure, we have to put a repeater. For instance, in this case, uh, in this case, you can see that we have an isolated area where it cannot be connected to the data collector, which is the data concentrator VCU. It cannot. And normally you are putting the repeater or a secondary DCU and a different scheme. Or on the RF, in RF case, you are putting the canopy and and the repeater. But in this case, you can you can use the you you can use the RF technology to connect the, the PLC network. And the other point here is that the other use case is that when you have a low density and high density network, there are uh, there are cases that in the low density network with the five or 10 meters, you may have to put a data collector and, and it is very costly. But with the RF technology, you can make a bridge from a low density network to the high density network and use the single uh, data concentrator, reducing your, uh, you're reducing your capex uh, on this uh, deployment. And the other thing is that when you have this type of solution, which is the uh, is a private network, your OPEX cost is reduced a lot. Means that you don't have that much of the OPEX. You're putting on the CapEx uh, investment and 
and you can have a scheme to reduce the cost of the of the capex and having said that i just wanted to share with you just the, the last part of the presentation in the partnership uh, in the partnership of uh, g3 alliance isgf st micro and the local D, uh, dso uh, we have done a, a proof of concept in india and i can show you the location that we we install is a small poc and and there are certain uh, unique uh, significance about this deployment is that first of all the area is uh, is very noisy you can see that uh, i just put the the blue line means the plc signal the red line is the noise you see they are reaching each other it's a very harsh environment for the plc to communicate in this case if you wanted to use the fully plc you have to build the infrastructure we have to put the repeaters and certain um, uh, the, the way to increase the transmit power so that uh, you'll be able to achieve, achieve the 100% KPI. And then uh, the, it was very unique area because when we are looking at the RF aspect of the solution, the, the, the interesting was that, that the houses was facing in the opposite direction. And if you are looking at the DCU, you can see that the front row houses or easily can communicate with the data concentrator, which is, has an RF capability. But the back building, the RF signal was going in the opposite direction. And it is much difficult for the back building to be able to communicate to the data concentrator. And there is a weakness between the, the two buildings. Again, in the RF technology, uh, we have to put the repeater so that we can, we can improve or we put another gateway in the direction of the RF signal so that we can collect the information from the, 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 the building in the in the hall. Uh, what, sir, sorry to interrupt you, but we are running out of time. So yeah. if you can uh, speed it up. Yeah, and... I have uh, maybe a minute uh, to finish it up. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to say that the, at the end is that by combination of the RF and PLC technology, you can see that the blue, the yellow lines, uh, the yellow lines are the RF technologies, and the red lines is the PLC. You can see that the, the, the back uh, back buildings using the PLC communication to reach to the DCO means that the back building with the RF technology now can can reach to the data concentrator through the PLC and many areas with a high noise that the PLC cannot operate and the RF can operate. And the other thing is that you can see that uh, during the day, the network keeps changing. You can see that here we have three PLC links. At night, we have one PLC link and mostly is RF. It means that it's adaptive to the network and it changes. And then in addition to that, it, it complementary to each other. I'm going to conclude it. Uh, I conclude my presentation. Uh, by saying that this is a new new way to improve the reachability is a standard based interoperable based and offers a new new application and, and a new avenue to enter to the smart grid arena uh, thank you very much for the opportunity